So, good morning everyone. Thanks for coming for my presentation. It's going to be like very developer focused presentation. I'm going to be showcasing the code and the stuff. It's about creating a CK Five plugin. That's uh, like how things like, work together, like some code snippets, and things like that. That's the link <coughs> plugin. So yeah, I'll do a quick demo. So, uh, my name is Nikolai. I'm a senior Drupal developer in Evolving Web. Uh, I've been with Drupal for like, maybe over the 10 years at the moment, and mostly throughout at least half of my past I've been a uh, backend developer, and here I am like presenting about uh, frontend technology, what's happened. So yeah, CK04 to 5 updated. It's closely connected to updating Drupal 9 to 10, so that's, I guess that's why how a backend developer could be involved in this thing. So yeah, uh, before we move on to the presentation, just a couple of words about our company. We are Evolving Web. We are based in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And as this slide probably says, we help our clients bring their digital experience to life. And amongst our clients, we have like any kind of like clients, including like government bodies, like large teams, small teams. So I listed like three of them just to balance my slide and not show on the, the slogan, but. The point being here is that uh, some of our clients that have like extended, pretty large content team uh, um, like teams, and they expect some sort of uh, editing experience. So, like for me as a technical person, it means that for some of our sites, we have lots of Secator Four uh, country plugins, which should be ported to Secator Five. Okay, so I'm gonna be like doing small introduction, which I already started doing. Then I'm gonna show how the plugin is connected to Drupal, how we define our Secure Five plugin in Drupal. Then I'm gonna be showcasing some tools, and then I'm gonna cover the structure of the plugin. So it can, it has like three basically keys: uh, edit, edit and plugin, UI plugin, the comma. And here I want to do some remark. I'm calling them plugins. But in fact, they are like part of the plugin. We have like one pl plugin, but technically they are plugins. So they extend the plugin class. So I'll, I'll be referring to them as plugins, but think about that as uh, parts of the plugin. Uh, so yeah, I created some repo. I haven't actually figured out our company policy about public repos. So I created that in my personal GitHub account. So if you're interested, go ahead, download the repo and take a look at that. I'll wait till we get your pictures. That's the <laughs> example how you can include that in your composer JSON. Very simple. So, yeah, a little bit of acknowledgement of my GitHub account rather than <laughs> the company's own. So yeah, uh, migration from CK Editor four. As I said before, it's closely connected to upgrading Drupal from nine to ten because Drupal. Nine reached its end of life. I need. Mean, I think yes. it's yeah, it's yesterday. And CK04 did that this summer. I believe it's June or July. So when we are, sorry, when we are updating our site, usually we are updating the editor as well. And here I listed a few quotes from the documentation, which I which I think are interested and they kind of <laughs> give a good overview of what it is. Uh, CK04 is the rich text editor with MVC architecture in mind, model view controller. It's custom data model and virtual DOM. Uh, CK05 <coughs> compared to CK04 is a totally new editor and I cannot agree more. Uh, it was completely redesigned and there is no automatic solution for migrating, especially like this one. Uh, CK04 will not be compatible, uh, any extensions for CK04 will not be compatible with CK05, which means that we are meant to rewrite them from scratch. Uh, when I started digging into that, uh, it was like a totally new framework for me, uh, and I found like few examples of CK05 uh, documentation, official documentation, but I thought that it's maybe not enough, and I created one more, so this link plugin is the one of those extensions and I forgot to actually showcase it. <laughs> Let me, maybe, oops. 
quickly switch to my damage potent site. Then I'm editing my basic page. And yeah, that's how it looks like. That's uh, that's my link. That's the toolbar button for that. It's called a like, demo link. I call it demo link. And if I do this, I see the form. I do some values in here. And, yeah, like, and I click submit. I see this link. <coughs> Another examples of this link, and if I click the source, uh, the only difference from uh, the built-in link plugin created that just just for demo purposes. So it's kind of simplified version of the plugin I created for the client. I had like lots of different like, complex form elements and stuff like that. But for the demo purposes, I simplified that till a class demo link, href, and two child elements spam and small, and that's it. So yeah, let me get back to my slides. I opened three tabs, which was not a very good idea. So yeah. First, let's start from our familiar part, how to connect it to Drupal. Uh, the plugin structure, and most of the, my presentation will, will be like that, with like code snippets and some, uh, some tips. So first, it's together five YAML file. It defines uh, the plugin. So it's just very descriptive thing. It defines the plugin. It defines Drupal li uh, JS library. It defines the toolbar button. The parent HTML element. Parent HTML element is the element we want to attach our plugin to. In most of the cases, it's just a paragraph. Then our Drupal library, which is a minified JS file, and the source to to create this minified JS file. As simple as that. Uh, let's look into the YAML file here. It has two parts, and here I listed the bare minimum. I would say I attached a couple of links to the documentation where it lists all the possible things that you can define in the YAML file, but the bare minimum would be uh, CKTR5 part and Drupal part. CKTR5 part, we define the our plugin. We just like say, hey, Drupal, we have a new plugin, and the first uh, part would be the... Do they have mouse? Yes, I do. The folder name and the class name, and the file name, respectively. Uh, the Drupal part, we, say, uh, we define the label, we define the library I just showed in my previous slide, we define the toolbar button. We still would need to program it, but here we just like saying that it's going to be there. And we define the parent element. As I said, it's, it's a paragraph, and usually it is a paragraph for many plugins. So the tools that I used, uh, Webpack, and what's interested is that I checked a few country modules and the configuration for Webpack it stays the same for most of them. It's like standardized. The only thing that I changed is the development mode and uh, production mode. And you might as well go like Webpack watch and the flag development or production. <coughs> but I changed that in this file. And I, I attached the example of this file from one of the country modules, which in this case is a diff manager. So you can, you are safe to copy it over. Uh, and the second tool is more interesting, the CKDR5 dev tools module, Drupal module, and it goes with uh, two parts. The first one would be the example module, which uh, utilizes one of the examples in the documentation and it uh, wraps it around, like in Drupal, it creates this uh, YAML file to connect it to Drupal. So it is uh, like a starting point for many modules. If you look at the code of the many Contrib modules for Secure 5 plugins, you can see the pattern that the developers use this example as the starting point. And the second thing is Secure 5 Inspector. It's it's a very useful tool. It's used for visualize and debug the model. Not only that, but I found it's the this feature the most like beneficial. And that's how it looks like. Oh. Okay. Uh, Okay, still good. Uh, the screenshot at the top, that's my link. And screenshot at the bottom, that's this editor, and that's the model views, how the model looks. So model is, I'll, I'll talk about model and view shortly, but that's some abstract data representation. And it's useful just to 
uh, have the debugger window just to see the all the child elements nesting and attributes. So that's how you can you can use this inspector. So let's talk about the plugin structure. <coughs> well, yeah, as I said first, it's a minified uh, file by JS, which we use in our library, and that's its source. <coughs> and its source consists of three, three plus one parts. First, it's index.js, which is going to be our starting point. That's its editing plugin, the UI plugin, and the comment. And here you can see that I have like a little bit more files than that. It's just my helper classes and just things that I use to wrap the boilerplate code. But what you need to have is editing plugin, UI plugin, and the comment, and the index.js to glue things together. A uh, couple of words about editing UI and comment. I'll be referring to them a lot. So it's not some scientific definition, just something that I put in very simple terms. Edit and plugin, it defines the elements uh, hierarchy, it uh, defines the conversions, how we convert data from this abstract level, which is called model, to view, which you can think about our HTML. It's not technically HTML, but you can think this way. So we define the rules. That's what edit and plugin does. The UI plugin specifies the whole thing that we can actually visualize. First toolbar button, that's uh, edit and form, and the selection. Selection is uh, when you put your mouse in some place in the editor, there are like events that can react on this, on, on that. And you like, need to make sure when you're editing the plugin that at least you're within the plugin's boundary, you're not somewhere else. And the comment. Comment, uh, it kind of stands alone. It's called from somewhere else. We'll get to this, but it's like three important parts. And comments is, comment is used to uh, modify the model, the actual element. So when we are editing the element and <coughs> putting new values, we are uh, calling the comment. So yeah, index.js. <coughs> Technically, it could be the only file in, um, in your application, but it's just a nice thing to do to uh, break it down into editing part in the UI part. So here I'm importing editing, I'm importing UI, I'm defining the plugin name, and I'm exporting the class. That's it. So it's just glues together editing and the UI part. Editing plugin. First, elements hierarchy is what it does, and second, it gets uh, the data converted from the abstract level to HTML and the other way around. Uh, Editing plugin, it operates on two, well, notions, things, layers, uh, called model and view. I will give the proper definition to that, but just because I'll be referring to that a lot, it's something to, some, uh, some simple words just to have a basic understanding what it is. Uh, model is the abstract label of data representation. Ckator 4 used to operate on HTML directly. Uh, Ckator 5 operates on its internal data structure. So model is this abstract like structure. I showcase that in the screenshot in the editor. And what is important to understand here that model is not it may not correspond to HTML one-to-one, uh, -one, which means that we, let's say, have our model, we have attributes for the model A, A B, C, and D, and those A, B, C, and D attributes, it's not necessary for attributes for HTML at the very end, but after all. It might be converted to whatever, it might be converted to one attribute, to 10 attributes, it might be converted to n attributes plus n children. So it's just the abstract representation, it's not HTML. And second layer is the view. And here I put that it is HTML because we are dealing with the content for the websites, but technically it could be XML, it could be markdown, it could be pretty much anything. So but for simplicity we're gonna think about that as the HTML. And this HTML might be a little bit different for the end user and for the content editor. So when we are the content editor is editing the link, and they see the window of uh, CKTR5. We can add, if you want to, if we, we can add some extra information for the editor. We, we, we don't have to. And in my example, the content editor would see exactly the same thing as the, the end user. Uh, so, yeah, what editing plugin does first? 
schema conversion, the common. Common, as I said before, is a standalone thing, but in the edit and plugin, we, we initialize it. So we just like say that here's our editor, here's our common, blend them together. Uh, the first thing, as I said before, is hierarchy. And proper word would be a schema. So we define the model schema. So it's uh, the set of rules how the elements can be nested into each other and their allowed attributes. I'm going to showcase the example. And the conversion. Conversion is the uh, rules how model could be transferred to the view and the other way around. So that refers to the point I, I made before that it's not necessarily one-to-one -one conversion. It could be any, you can add any custom logic in here. And downcast conversion from model to view, it could be broken down to two pipelines. Data pipeline is what the end user sees. The editing pipeline is that uh, content editor sees. We can just drop editing pipeline if you don't need to, but if we do, we can show some extra, extra things for the content editor. So schema, finally some example here. Uh, first, from the top to the bottom, I'm, I'm defining the parent element called demo link. I'm saying that it inherits uh, everything from uh, inline object, which is a schema element like built in Cicator file. So instead of just listing all possible attributes, I'm saying like inherit <coughs> everything from that. So it's going to be inline element. And then it's going to have two attributes allowed, demo link URL and demo link class. That's my custom attributes for my plugin. And it would have two children, demo link text and demo link file extension respectively. And the example for one of those children, we're saying that we are defining the demo link text. It's allowed in demo link, not somewhere else. And it's uh, it may cont contain the content of the block element of um, which is built in Ctor file. Uh, the third property is limit. It's not directly related to my talk, but that could be like additional semantics of the model. It could be an example of that. So it's like additional set of rules how the model would behave. I think that it, this limit stays for uh, when your selection starts within the element, it should not end outside the element or something like that. I'm, I'm not certain to be honest. Uh, so yeah, that's what schema <coughs> does. We, we define in the hierarchy, we define in how our HTML that we want to get it, uh, how it would be presented on the model level here. So model and view, again, the, they are the key notion. So more proper definition, proper form definition that model is implemented at DOM tree, DOM like tree structure. So this abstract level of things of elements and text nodes. And unlike the actual DOM, unlike the HTML model, uh, both Elements and text nodes of the model can have attributes, so we can attach attributes to here if we want to, if we need to. Not only if it's a text node, it still can get it still can get attributes. So here, yeah, here's the example in the editor. It's the same thing, but uh, on a different level. So for uh, on the right, it's view, and view is the representation a representation of the DOM structure. It's not exactly HTML. It's but we think about that as HTML, HTML wrapped with something else. Uh, could be Markdown, could be XML, but HTML for us. And that's my simple HTML. A plus demo link href corresponds to demo link attribute class, attribute URL, two child elements, span class text, transfer to demo link text, and a, a small class file extension. It, it gets uh, translated to demo link file extension child element. So that's the same thing represented on different layers. Uh, how we connect those layers together? We use so-called conversion. Uh, there is upcast conversion, downcast conversion. Upcast conversion is the conversion <coughs> from the view level to, to the model. So we have the initial data, HTML, in our case. And first, what that thing that we do when we have this HTML, like when we input this HTML, we create the view object around this HTML. So we have this view layer. Uh, then we define <coughs> converters, so how this view layer could be transferred into the model. And important part here that 
from this point, we operate with the model. We don't operate with the view. We don't operate with the HTML. We modify the model. We do changes with the model. We have the model. So this process is called half-cast conversion. So we are converting HTML to the view object through our set of rules to the model. And we operate with the model. Downcast conversion, a little bit more elements in here. Uh, we have our model, we do changes with the model, we content editor, editing the plugin, putting new values into this link, and we are changing the model, but we want to see the view updated, we want to see the actual HTML update. Uh, it goes through the downcast uh, process, down, downcast conversion, so that's the set of rules, how we transform a model to view, and as I said before, it could be broken down into data and editing, so in my example, you can just neglect this. Uh, but uh, if you want to show extra data for our kind of editors, we can just uh, go ahead and define two different, would be like two different functions for the end user and for for the uh, content editor. So yeah, finally an example. Uh, it's a very simple example. It's very simplified. We can add like as much logic as we want in here, but. Let's look at the view to model conversion. We are operating with one of our child elements, which would be span class text, and we are creating the demo link text. So it's view to model, view to uh, HTML to this abstract representation. So as an input, we have span class text. As an output, we use our model writer to create the model element called demo link text. It's simple as that. And the other way around, we have the model element demo link text, and we use the view writer to create uh, the view element span with class HTML. Uh, sorry, with class text. So yeah, that was the end of the editing plugin, and we are moving on to the UI plugin. Uh, UI plugin, three three things to think about: toolbar button form, and so on. <coughs> let's start from oh no, <laughs> introductory slide. Yeah, that's how it looks. So we have the toolbar button on my screen, which is on the right. We have <coughs> the form with three text input fields, and we have two buttons. Uh, and the init module, uh, init uh, method of the UI plugin looks like this. So first we define the balloon. Balloon is the object uh, around the form. It's just something to contain the form. It's like what CKDR5 does to display the UI. And we call three methods. At toolbar button, create the form and handle the selection. Let's go through them. Toolbar button. Uh, from the top to the bottom. We are uh, creating one component. We are uh, adding a new component, which would be our, our button with that content editor can press. We call it, uh, we say that we define for the demo link plugin, we use the button view class, which is uh, something built in the CKTR5. We used it for toolbar buttons, for buttons in the form, for pretty much anything which looks like a button. So it's not specifically for, for the toolbar. Uh, we set the label. We set the icon, which would be an SVG, SVG image that we imagine we imported on the top of our file. And we say, say that we want to see the text tooltip. The other piece of code is that when we connect our button to the command. So the command, I'll talk about that a bit later, it has like properties, set, it has attributes. And if we want to set the dependencies, so if comments attribute is enabled, is false, we want to gray out our button as possible. Let's say we don't want to display our link, uh, sorry, not button, but our plugin. Our, we don't want to display our link inside something else, table, or inside any other custom plugin. We, we can specify this logic in the comment and say that if this value is false, we can gray out our button. And when we are done, uh, no, uh, when we click execute, we are showing the UI. That's the some boilerplate code I wrapped into into the show UI method. So when we're done, uh, yeah, we're done with, uh, with the toolbar in here. Form view. For me, as a Drupal backend developer, it looks a little bit uh, on the lower side of things. It's not like high level, or sort of low level. So you need to define all the like little aspects of behavior of all like Form elements. So I wrapped 
my boilerplate code that would do that this in the create input uh, method. So I tried to make it a little bit more similar to Drupal form API, but in fact it's not. So first, yeah, I'm creating three text elements. I'm not showcasing this boilerplate code it could be on the documentation or in my Git, GitHub repo. I'm creating three uh, text elements. Then I'm creating the save button. I'm defining that the save button is going to be a, a type of, of, of submit type. Then uh, I'm creating the cancel button. I'm saying that on the cancel button, I delegate the uh, respective form cancel uh, event. So basically, it means that when you hit cancel, the form disappears. That's it. And then I'm creating the collection. The collection it's uh, something to actually render the form within Secator 5. We are not like using tweak templates or something like this. So we created the collection, and when we're uh, passing the collection to the template, it's not tweak template, something like from Secator 5. So yeah, at this moment we have the form. There is no behavior attached to the form. It's just like a form object in Drupal form API. It's just there. It doesn't do anything. Uh, then we are attaching listeners to our form. <coughs> uh, first line, we load the form view class. We have it. And we say that on the submit event, we want to collect the values, collect the, and those three text input values, and we want to pass those values to the comment. That's the important part. So what UI does, it gets the values, and it passes to the comment. Comment operates on the actual modification. Then we, we're done with that. We just hide the UI. If the user click cancel button, we hide, hide, the, hide the UI, we don't do anything else. And if the user clicked uh, outside of the form, like they opened the form and clicked like, somewhere else, we, we hide the form as well. So we don't do anything else with that. Uh, yeah, interesting thing here is that at this moment, this form object is instantiated just once. So we have. 10 links, we click on the 10 links, and we have like, different values in this form. But the form is the single object, and we repopulate populate it every time that when we click the link. And that's how we do that. Uh, first, we are attaching the form to the balloon. So it's just like something that we do in CKS, or we want our form to be displayed in this uh, pop-up uh, window, which is called the balloon. Uh, then we iterate uh, through the form elements. Uh, so we want to get the value that the user inputted in the in the form, and we want to pass this uh, the comment. Uh, we have the comment. We have the model fields. So that's like little map, and that's uh, how I call my. Uh, model field, and that's how it's called in the form. It's not exactly the same. I could have just used the same names, but uh, I went for this map. And so I'm it iterating through the form, and I'm checking if the comment value, if the comment has a respective value for this form element, and uh, I'm basically taking this value from the comment and putting that in the form. I'm just showing this uh, to the end user. In this snippet, I'm. <coughs> I have little uh, function for the URL, so if the URL value is empty, I'm just uh, showing the, the default value, so there's some specific beh behavior for the URL. And yeah, and that's, that's it, it's the last step, I'm focusing the first element of the form, I'm calling the focus method of the form. So yeah, like the point here is that I'm taking the uh, values from the comment and passing that to, to the form. In, Drupal side of things, you can think about comment at this point as sort of like form state array, so it can be, uh, it's where we store the values. Uh, so let, why it is this way? It, it's just the name of the method, it's not something important, but still it's, it looks a bit funky. Uh, okay, in the, what we do in the selection, in the selection, as I said before, that CK ter Five looks to me a little bit like low level, so we need to program like what what's happening when we reach the boundary of the link, like which means that if we click our button, it, like right before the link or right after. So are we in the link or are we outside? So that's where when we 
uh, where we actually like define this behavior. So if we are inside the our plugin or somewhere else, uh, so what we do here, uh, we have the event selection change. I'm just like looking the code from the top to the bottom. Uh, we first define if we are within the plugin. So we are checking like our uh, child elements. We have two, a uh, link text and file extension. If we are somewhere else, we just hide the UI. We don't do anything. Otherwise, we, we are shown the form because like now the user clicked on the link in the editor. Uh, we need to to identify our position, like position before and position after, which means that in our case, we can have two child elements, but it's not necessary to have two. We can have just one. We can have just text and no file extension. If we didn't input any value for file extension, it's not going to be there. So we need to specify which uh, of the child elements is going to be the last one. The first one is clear. It's demo in text. The last one could be text, could be file extension. So this piece of code is meant to to check where we are, to define our, uh, to understand if if we have file extension or not. If we have it, it's going to be the last one. So that's what we do. After we are done with that, we have the before touch and after touch values. So it it's what I, what I explained before. It's when we clicked right before the link or right after that. And in my case, if we are let's say right after the link and the u uh, the user hits the right arrow button. Uh, here I'm saying that I find the ancestor of the demo link uh, plugin, which is going to be the, the paragraph, and I move the selection from my plugin to the par paragraph. I'm not in the plugin, I'm somewhere else. So that's what I do here. That's it for the UI part and the comment. The comment is where we modif where we modify the model. So, right uh, at this point, we have the form, we have the editing rules, and we submitted some values in the form. We hit submit, and that's what happens next. <coughs> we pass those values to the comment. Oops. So yeah, the comments are the main way to manipulate the editor's contents and state. And it's mostly used by the UI elements, that's exactly what I said before, to make changes to the model. It has uh, usually has two methods. Refresh, which uh, uh, in the refresh method, you update the is enabled property. Remember when I was explaining about the toolbar button, this is enabled. It's something that controls if our button is grayed out or not. So we can just say is enabled true and be fine with that. But if you want to add some logic, add some logic. And also, we are updating the value uh, property of the method. The value property is our like, uh, form state. That's where we store our values. And in another method, add execute, we are actually modifying the element. So we have the new form values, we have the old model, and we put new values to the old model, updating the model. <laughs> So first, refresh method, uh, from the top to the bottom. We are defining our uh, properties. I'm saying just true and null. Then we are checking our selection, this uh, find element function. It's my helper function just to identify that I'm, uh, if I'm in the plugin boundaries or somewhere else. So if I didn't find the plugin, that means I'm somewhere else. Uh, OK. So we are trying to find the plugin. If we didn't find that, we just returned because like, we are operating only on existing plugins at this point. And we want to get the values of this plugin. So I'm setting the value. I'm initializing the empty value. I'm going through the attributes first, which in my case is going to be class and URL. <laughs> and I'm assigning those attributes to the value property. And then I'm going through the children. I have two of them. I, two of them are of the same type. They're text. So I'm getting the values of the text node. It's pretty <coughs> like a HTML code. And uh, when I get these values, I'm assigning those values to the comma. So after this method worked, I have updated uh, value property of the comment, which I can use in my form, which I can use in my UI plugin. But the point, point here is that it's updated. Another method, execute method, that's a method where we actually do the changes, where our content editor exits some values and we hit this submit button, 
and those values are passed here from the form, from the UI plan. Uh, on the model change, first we check if we are creating a new uh, element or we are editing an existing one. So as simple as that, if we found an existing one, which means that we are editing. If we didn't find, we are, we are creating one, because like now we are certain that we need to create the either create or edit the instance. So we are creating our plugin, we are setting the flag to true, and in th this method, it contains all the magic where I made it in the form I'm gonna showcase in the next slide. And when it's finished, if the plugin is new, we are inserting this plugin to the model. So we have the model object and we are adding our uh, plugin instance, which <coughs> is a model object to the whole model of the editor. So we have like different, we may have like different things in this model, like text, table, something, and we are adding our plug. So uh, now let's take a look at this method. This method is used to modify the model. And by modifying here, I mean maybe it's not the best way to do that. So I'm still, <laughs> maybe I'll reconsider that, but uh, I clear the whole thing, I clear the attributes, I clear all the child elements, and I recreate them. So it's done for to make sure that they are created in uh, the proper order, especially child elements. I don't want to have file extension first and then text later. I want to have text and then file extension. That's why I'm deleting the whole thing and just recreated that from scratch from the uh, common value. So I'm clearing up the attributes. I'm getting the attributes value from the uh, from the common, and I'm assigning those values to the to the model object. So we are done with attributes. Now we are going going through the children. The children are like span and small in HTML elements in our case. <laughs> span and small, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we are iterating through the children. Uh, we are getting the value from the child element before and here. I'm sorry, I have to use this. It's not very maybe explanatory, but I have to use these helper method because it's lots of like when the blade code is kind of like repetitive and it's not something that you want to go be paste. So uh, we are getting the form elements and we are creating our model objects. So that's where we cleared them, the child elements, and that's where we recreate them. So if you want to take a look into this method, so please go ahead and check the repo. Uh, at the moment, when I have both child elements, I'm appending them to the parent element, to the model. That's my parent element, in the proper order. Text first, file extension later. So at this moment, I perform the modification on my model. So I have an updated model. And that's it. <laughs> So yeah, if you have any questions, I believe you still have some time, or you can just chat with me at the booth. Do you do any validation when you're submitting the data? There is some built-in validation in the form uh, itself, so like if on the on the client side of this, but uh, and in this example, then I remember. Where would you put it then? The validation, you, you can put it basically in any step when uh, the data goes from uh, form to, to the comment. So you can put it even in the execute model, uh, in the execute method of the comment that I showed like right here. That's the very last step. So you here you have all the data, but you don't necessarily need to use the data. You can check it like right over here. You can also check it in the, in the UI. Let me just find this part of the code. Right here. So when you collect those values from the form, that would be the early stage, the early on stage. And before passing that to the common, that would be actually better. You can validate it in here, okay. in the UI. So if there are no other questions, I just promote our two events. Proudly made by Evolving Web, and first is going to be in Ottawa, 
end of this month, and another one's going to be next year in Atlanta, Georgia. So, save the date. All right. <laughs>